And once again, thank you so much for joining us today um, at Bloomer Academy, where we are talking about matching gifts. We have two presenters today, myself and Di Cox. Um, most of you are, are familiar with us, but um, today we are teaching a class together. So our first presenter is Diana Otero. Uh, Diana has been with Bloomerang for six years as of this month, uh, and she has done almost every single job at the company. Uh, and currently she is our product engagement manager. Thanks, Di. Um, my co-presenter for today is Di Cox. I love having her on Academy. She's been with Bloomerang for two and a half years now, but because we know each other so, we've known each other longer, and because she's such a great asset to Bloomerang, it feels like she's been here longer. She is a resident database consultant who brings a wealth of knowledge and experience from the nonprofit world. Welcome, Di. Thank you. Welcome, Diana. Um, as you may notice, we have our names are the same, so we are collectively called as Die Squared or Diana Squared. We respond to both. So thanks for joining us. Um, Di, would you like to take it away? Sure. All right. I'm going to switch over and share my screen. Can you guys see all right? All right, so today we are going to be talking about matching gifts. So uh, we're going to go through and talk about um, why they're important, how to get started with it. Uh, we're going to dive into Bloomerang uh, to set up the database for matching gifts. Uh, we'll be talking about uh, entering and tracking them, uh, different reporting, um, and you know ways to uh, identify potential matches. Uh, we'll also be talking about um, some communication. Uh, because communicating your program to your donors is incredibly important. Uh, we will have time for some live Q&A. And then as always, we have resources. Uh, you know, you guys will be receiving all of this, the slides, everything from today. Um, so don't feel like you have to, uh, you know, furiously scribble notes. We'll make sure that you guys get all of the resources from today. All right. So, you know, the first question is, why should we have a matching gifts program? Um, matching gifts are a really low effort way to increase revenue and positively impact donor retention. Um, starting a matching gifts program is pretty easy. And depending on your staffing, your goals, different efforts that you guys have, um, it can be more passive or a more active uh, role for someone at your nonprofit to take on. Uh, it is possible for nonprofits of every size to employ a strategy uh, that can have a positive impact on your annual dollars raised. Um, matching gift programs are also really attractive to donors. Uh, it gives them a way to increase the impact of their donation and can help them start a conversation with their employers or even their coworkers about causes that matter to them. Uh, so constituents who are excited about your mission and the work you're doing are more likely to continue to give. And if their employer is willing to share that impact, then all it does is ramp up their excitement. So how do we start a matching gift program? Um, so I, there's bullet points here. I'm going to kind of dive into them a little bit deeper. Um, so the first thing is in recording your employment information in your CRM or whatever program you're using. If you're using Excel, track it there. Uh, reporting is going to be really important for this and your reports are only as good as your data. So make sure that you're tracking that information as you find out about it. And that way you can refer back to it when you need it. Um, you're also going to create some custom fields uh, for tracking this information. Um, it's important to know if a company matches a gift, if a donor's company matches a gift, um, if your constituents are planning to ask for your gifts to be matched, all of that data is really important. Uh, and so Diana is going to go into some different ways to track that, um, again, in Bloomerang or whatever system you're using. Um, you uh, can add those custom fields to your online donation forms uh, so that people can get back to you and give you some of that information that you need. Um, 
some other things that you can do, uh, you can uh, go through your database, um, do some just kind of general web research and find out uh, if your organizations are advertising that they have matching gift programs. Um, some organizations really take pride in their matching gifts and will put it on the website. Um, some people will put it in, you know, employment documents. Uh, some won't. So there's, you know, a possibility that there are going to be organizations that have matching gift programs and you're just unaware of it. Um, you can also uh, identify the top 10 largest companies in your area. So uh, area is a vague word, so it could be region, state, um, city, kind of depending on what your geographic location looks like. Uh, and you can go in and find out uh, if they have matching gift programs. Um, sidebar, this can also be really helpful to see if they have like volunteer programs, um, grants, that sort of thing. Um, but you can then go back in and see if any of those companies are in your database and you can update their information that way. Um, and then once uh, a, a matching gift comes in, you're gonna wanna make sure that you update your custom fields uh, soft credit, all of that. Diana will go into that a little bit later. Um, and then finally, you consider you can consider discussing matching gifts on your website. Um, so basically, what that is is talking about matching gifts, um, saying that you accept them. Um, you know, you it doesn't have to be a full page; it can be a blurb when you're talking about donations or gifts in general. Um, but one thing to remember is to strike a balance between pushing for dollars and communicating impact. Uh, and what I mean by that is obviously as fundraisers, you need to bring money in and matching gifts, you know, can be a, a pretty simple way to do that. Um, but you want your donors to know that they're more than just a dollar sign. So instead of talking about, you know, doubling money, doubling money, doubling money, you can talk about doubling impact. Um, so talk about what different donation levels can do at your organization, uh, and then what doubling that can do as well. Um, that way your donors have a stronger idea of what this impact is that they have and then what can be done if they you know are able to maximize that gift with a matching gift program and have their employers get on board and start donating as well all right i'm going to pass it over to diana thanks Thank you, Di. Um, we're going to jump into the database here to see how you can set up this information and start tracking this information. Uh, as Di mentioned earlier, the data is only as good as what you're tracking, so it's very important to get this set up in the beginning. Um, we are going to show you some recommendations that you can add to your database to track this information. Um, if you think of more, please share in the chat. Um, you can always add them to your database. That's the beauty of the custom field is that you can customize it for your organization. So when, we, when we're thinking about setup, the very first thing you want to do is set up an appeal for matching gifts. This appeal is what you're going to be using when the match comes in so that you're able to report on matches that have come in. You also want to use some custom fields. So this will allow you to track additional information about your donors or, or matching entities as well as the gifts themselves. And lastly, the relationships. You can use relationships to help identify potential matches. Um, it could also in general help with relationship building as well. So let's take a look at that. Before we jump into the, the, the database, I want to talk about the two different types of custom fields um, that you're going to create. We have some custom fields that we're going to create on the constituent side, and this is going to be about the donor or about the entity that's going to be matching the donation. Um, for example, um, you can add... Um, you can set it up as, does this organization have a matching gift program? Yes or no. Um, you on the organization side, on the individual side or the employee side, you can have something that asks, does your employer have a matching gift program? I like wording it this way because you can see we have a tip here that you can add these questions or these custom fields to your form so that you can get this information. You know, it's just, it's, a non, it's another way that you can let your donors know that you have a matching gift program if this is included in your form. 
Um, so I like phrasing it this this way so I can see very clearly uh, which is what, but you can you can change the phrasing and the name of that. We also want um, some custom fields on the transaction side. And this is going to be pertaining to the gift because I, as a donor, when I make a donation, not all of my gifts may be matched. Maybe my employer has a limit um, to the amount that they're going to, to match. Um, so maybe not every gift is going to be matched. Um, so that you're tracking that on the transaction side, on the gift side. So let's jump into the database. Oops, let's jump into the database and set those up. So if you're an administrator in the database, you have access to our settings section, which is this gear icon over here. And if you click that first, you're gonna to go to appeals. So this is gonna have a whole slew of different appeals that you use for or your organization. But the important thing here is that you have one for matching gift. If you don't have one yet, it's very easy to create one. Just click the new button type in matching gift or however you would like to call it and then click save. Once you start doing that, I'm going to type that in here. I'm not going to save it since I already have it, but once you click save, it's now available to use throughout your database. Next, we'll take a look at custom fields. So we talked about um, the two different custom fields on the constituent side and on the transaction side. An important distinction here as well is constituent custom fields appear on the constituent's profile, while the transaction custom fields, you'll only be, be able to see that on the gift itself. So you can go here. Um, so I already have my gift matching program here. I'm going to rename it just so it's a little bit clearer for me and I can distinguish if I'm tracking this on the organization side or the individual side, organization gift matching program. And let's create the employee one from scratch. So you would just name it. And for here, I'm creating, oops, I created that as a category instead of as a field. So let's do that again. So under your general info, just create new field here. And under what kind of data goes in this field, it's going to be text. And how you enter the data into this field, it's going to be pick one value from a list. The list here being yes or no. Uh, the reason we're setting it up this way is that it's easy to report on this field. You can easily run a report to check if people have, um, if, or if people's employers have a matching gift program or not. So we're going to click save and we're going to add values of yes and no. Once I've created these custom fields, when you go to a constituent's profile, it's now going to be available on their profile. So let's say we go to my profile. you're going to see those fields right here and you can populate them as needed. One thing I really love about this as well is you can add these custom fields to your Bloomerang donation forms. So if you are creating your donation forms or you have existing donation forms, you can go to the website integration page, go to online giving forms. I have a form that's already here and if you scroll to the bottom, this is where you can add your custom fields. So we'll take, take this out so I can show you how to add that from scratch. So we created constituent custom fields. And we can add here, does your employer have a matching gifts program? Once I save this and I go to my form, the form is already on my website. Um, you can add those custom fields here. 
another custom field here is I'm asking if the donation itself will be matched. So that's on the transaction side. Let's add that. And if we refresh the form, we should be able to see both custom fields on my um, form. So you can ha have your, does your employee employer have a matching gift program? If the donor can choose to say yes or no, and will this particular donation be matched? They can again say yes or no. So that's just another way where you can add awareness about your matching gift program and give your donors the ability to match or give your donors employers the ability to match their gifts. Now, before we jump into the reports, Di, do you have any other um, insights on setup? Sure. Um, so if you are planning on using these custom fields for online forms, uh, having yes or no uh, is going to be important. Uh, we also did have uh, a question come through about would it be helpful to have an I don't know option? Uh, potentially, yes. Uh, that way, you know, it gives them the opportunity to go ask and then they can follow up with you as needed. Uh, if you are not going to be using those on uh, a form, um, for example, uh, you know, the organization one, uh, where it's just does this organization have a matching gift program, uh, you can opt to just have yes. Uh, and then if it's no, obviously, it would be left blank. Um, I wanted to point that out specifically, because I know that a lot of people don't use that no function, but it's really important for the online form to have it. Absolutely. Um, and thank you for that wonderful question. If you have additional fields to add like that, or you can always go in and rename those options, right? So I can go back into my custom field. Um, for example, here, instead of saying no, if they can just leave it blank, you can always rename that to the I don't know option um, or add an additional option for I don't know. Thanks for that question. And maybe that will prompt them to find out and let you know moving forward. Thank you for that question. Okay, next we're going to jump into some reports here. Um, this is just, we'll, we're, these are the different reports that we're going to show you today. First, we're going to show all matching gifts that have been received, um, how much those matches are, and how much is forecasted to come in from those matches. Um, and then we'll take a look at how to find organizations or employers who have a matching gift program. Um, so these are organizations in your database that you already know have a matching gift program program. And then we'll go into some fun relationship reporting. We'll take a look at employers have a matching gift program, but individuals haven't given, or individuals have given in the past, but there is no matching gift yet, and some ideas for end of gift, end of year matching gifts follow up. Before we do that, actually, let's go ahead and enter um, a gift and a matching gift into the database so we can start reporting on that. So let's say, for example, let's say, for example, we, I give a gift to this organization, you would enter that normally as you would any other gift. So we'll, we're going to create a donation. So let's say I gave a donation today of $500 to the unrestricted fund. So at this point, we're, we're entering like it like any other donation. But an important thing to do here, I click save too quickly, is to note that this donation will be matched. And I do have that custom field here. So yes, and I want to enter, enter any additional notes that I have about the match into the note. So for example, who is matching this? Um, what information do you have? Um, is it the employer that's going to be matched? Is it a 50% match, 100% match? Any information that you have about the match, all of that information can go into the notes. So we can say here,
let's say for this example at 100%, um, boomerang puts out matches quarterly. So this gives us a good idea of when to expect the match. And then we're going to save. So at this point, um, there's two ways you can go about this. And this and this is a common question we get as well. At this point, do we? how do we record the match from Bloomerang? Um, in this case, because we know that a match is coming in, we can create a pledge on Bloomerang's account um, to let us know when the, ex the match is expected to come in. Especially, we know that um, they will pay out quarterly. So we're going to go to Bloomerang's account and enter a pledge on their account. And it said they were going to be matching for um, $500. Um, and this time, we'll create, we'll select the appeal of matching gift. We'll put none, um, and then we will create the schedule. So you can select the frequency as custom. It's going to have one payment, and it's going to be the full payment. And if we know that they pay out quarterly, we can select the date at the end of the quarter. So that would be June. So let's say the match is going to come in at the end of the quarter. So at the end of June, we're expecting that match to come in. And then another important thing here is we want to make sure to use the soft credit feature. The soft credit feature is what ties this back to the original donor and gives the original donor credit for this match coming in. So we're going to click plus on the cross soft credit going to search for our original donor and add the soft credit for 500. This way, when we report on this and when we, um, when the match comes in, we can acknowledge the original donor as well for a match being made to their original donation. Oops. Click that. The schedule looks good. And then we'll click Save. So once we have those, so we have the original donor um, or the original gift on the original donor's account. We have the pledge on the matching entity's account. And when we go back to the original donor, there's going to be a soft credit on the account um, based on the match. So let's start reporting on these. So the first report that we'll take a look at is all matching gifts received and forecasted. So we'll be able to see the gift we just entered here as well. So you can see here that I'm, I'm filtering for appeal as a matching gift and type is donation or pledge. So you'll see some older donations here as well. These are the matches that have already come in. Um, whereas these are matches who, who's, the match hasn't been, been fulfilled yet. So you can see here our latest one that we just entered. We have the pledge from Bloomerang for 500. And we have our appeal is matching gift. And we have details here about the soft credit. -y. So the soft credit name, soft credit amount, this refers to the original donor. Um, Let's actually, let's move these columns around. I apologize, I thought I did that earlier. I like seeing all the amount columns together. And I wanted to point out I wanted to point out, so for our donations, these are the matches that already came in. For our donations, they're going to show the revenue amount. For the pledge, since the match hasn't come in yet, we just, we're just taking note that the match will come. Um, it's showing the amount of the match, but there is no revenue amount yet because there hasn't been any amount paid toward it. And for projected revenue, this is how much we're projecting um, for a certain time frame. 
and you can filter this date range in term, uh, sorry, sorry, you can filter this column based on a date range. So if you have matches for pledges, for example, that may span multiple years, you can take a look at what's projected to come in this fiscal year, what's projected to come in for the next quarter, for the next two or three years, that's up to you. So I like seeing those numbers side by side so I can know when the matches are expected to come in and how much is going to be fulfilled, if it's going to be fulfilled over a longer period of time. Awesome. So that's a, a report that you can run. This is just a transaction report um, and we're looking for appeal as matching gift. Um, and the type is donation or pledge. I'm going to go ahead and save this so it saves the changes that we made moving around. Um, another report that I'd like to take a look at is finding organizations or employers that have a matching gift program in your database. So this is a report that's nice to take a look at for stuff that's already come in, but what if you're trying to um, you know, launch your match and gift program or um, make it more robust, get more people involved in your match and gift program, more people giving to your match and gift program. Maybe there's some untapped potential in your database that you want to tap into. So because we have that custom field, I'm just creating a simple constituent report here. And I'm just filtering for constituents who have, um, who's, who have a matching gift program. And you can see here that I have 21 organizations in my database who have a matching gift program. There's a couple of things you can do with this report. We're just starting with our basic reports here, but there's a couple of things you can do with the report. Um, first, for example, and first, this is a report where you already know that they have a matching gift program. If you're trying to kind of identify other organizations who may potentially match that you're not sure about, that's a whole different report that you can run as well. What I like to do with this report is I want, is I like to see I like to add a column for relationships and list their employees. I'm going to move this over so it's a little bit easier to see. Another thing that I like to add here is a column for lifetime giving. So I'm just using our column there for lifetime revenue, and I'll move that over here. So right now it's showing me I have these different organizations in my database, right? I have Acme Corporation, Archer, Bikahuna Burger, Bloomerang, along with their lifetime revenues, and any employees that they have in my database. So for example, I can see here that Bloomerang, um, in their lifetime with my organization, um, has given $2,000, and these are all their employees that are also in my database. So I can take a look at this as this $2,000, it may consist of matches, it may not, um, but I can potentially increase that impact and multiply that impact if I tap into their employer ba employee base and take advantage of that match. Whereas if I take a look at Acme Corporation, um, Acme Corporation on its own has given me over $7,000, but I don't have any of their employees currently in my database. Um, I don't have any employees of theirs giving. If I did, if I was able to cultivate that relationship, then again, I can multiply that impact from Acme Corporation by taking advantage of that match. So I can go down the list here um, and kind of compare that. Um, or Krusty Krab, Krusty Krab maybe um, has been involved with my organization in other ways, but hasn't given, but they have an employee matching program or a gift matching program. Is there some way we can, we can tap into that? Or Starfleet um, hasn't given yet, but they have a number of employees um, from their organization who are giving to my database who are, who are engaged in my database. How can we multiply that impact using that matching gift program? And 
again, this is only for those constituents who we have already identified already have a matching gift program. Um, I love the example earlier as well. Maybe you want to take a look at and ex expand your search to, um, I don't know, right? If they're not sure if their employer has a matching program, maybe we'd like to find out for sure if they do or not. Um, do we have any questions in the meantime, Dai? Or do we have any, what else would we, can we do with this report? I uh, so we did have, uh a question about could you, uh, showing what a pledge payment looks like. So once the uh, employer donates, uh, actually sends in that match, can you walk through adding that uh, gift to the pledge payment? Absolutely, thank you. Um, before we move away, I'm gonna save this report because I don't wanna lose the changes we made. And we'll go back to Bloomery. So um, once the match comes in, um, so the pledge, the pledge was made today and we projected that it would be coming in at the end of June. Let's pretend it's already at the end of June and we've already received the match. So from the pledge itself, you can navigate to the pledge, click on actions, and there's a button here for new payment. Once I select new payment, the pledge payment will inherit the properties of the pledge. So you don't have to put in the fund campaign appeal anymore. It's going to inherit what's coming in from the pledge. Um, and we did say that 500 is the balance, but depending on how they're doing their match, if they're pay paying it in full yet or partial, you can take a look at that. But for this one, let's say they're paying it in full. They sent us a check. You can fill in the rest of the details. Um, and then click save. And so you'll see the, you'll still see the record of the pledge and of the pledge payment. And I would also like to go back and show the soft credit um, on the original donor's timeline as well. So there's, there's the donation for their original gift and there's the soft credit for um, their gift being matched. And when you're running reports, um, you can filter for these types of transactions just to make sure if you only wanna see the, the donations themselves or if you wanna see the, the soft credits and you can send acknowledgements to the donor um, accordingly as well. So I can send a thank you letter for their original gift of 500 that has come in. I can also send them a thank you for their gift being matched based on the soft credit. Thank you for that question. Okay. Um, we have a couple of reports. Uh, we have a couple of more reports showing here. Um, that we want to show you here um, that take advantage of our um, employer employee report template. Any other questions before I move to that? Uh, and that was actually a really good segue. Uh, we had a question um, about uh, pledge reminders. And so I had let them know that it's under templates. Um, so you're heading there anyway, so you can point that out as you drive by. Awesome. Wonderful. So we're going to go to reporting. And you can build a lot of or all of the reports that we're showing you today, you can absolutely build from scratch. But I do love pointing out that we have several report templates that you can use. Um, these report templates, you can also still build them from scratch, but they all ha already have um, the filters and columns pre pre-filled, pre-populated for you, and you can just change it accordingly. So for example, we have templates for monthly donors. We have templates for pledge reminders. Um, so these are pledges that have a payment due next month. So let's take a look at that real quick. So if we look at um, the pledge reminder template, so this is looking for any pledge that has 
um, an installment date that is due next month. Now, again, this is a report template that's there for you to use, but you can always change it. So if you're, if in your process, you send out the pledge reminder letters a month in advance, this is a great report for you. You don't need to change the date. Um, but let's say you wanna send out pledge reminders um, 60 days in advance, um, two months in advance, 45 days in advance, it, it's up to you. So you can change the report filters to suit your needs. So for example, you could say instead of ne next month, you can say that has a payment due in the next 45 days, next 60 days, it's up to you, next quarter, um, depending on how far in advance you would like to send those reminders. A great thing about these reports as well, well, you'll notice that when I when I jump from next month to 45 days, I now have four pledges. Um, and um, this will show you the status as well in arrears, meaning that um, they've missed a payment before. Um, in good standing, they haven't missed a payment yet. So these are just good things to kind of take a look at um, when you're preparing your report as well. What I love about our reports as well is that you can run these reports, fine tune the report to what exactly you would like to see and who exactly you'd like to communicate. And then you can save this report and then reference it in a letter or an email. So once you have this report, it's how you want it to be. So let's say these are pledges with payments due in 45 days. So we're going to save that. It's going to be on my report list. If I go to a letter or an email, I can reference that report so I don't have to build those filters from scratch all over again. I can just tell the email, uh, I can just tell the email or the letter, send this email or send this letter to everyone who was in that report. Thank you for that question. Wonderful. Um, and we'll take a look at how you reference those reports here in a little bit as well. Um, for now, we are about to jump into, we have a report template for employer relationships. I have some pre-built reports here that build upon our employer relationships. I sh I'll show you what it looks like from scratch first, and then we'll build the report. So our basic relationship template here just looks at any constituents where the role is employee and the other's role is employer. Now, when you're building a report like this, I want to point out what's the difference between what if I have employer at the top here and employee at the bottom here. Um, whichever role that you specify here, that's who is under the name and the primary street city contact information giving history belongs to whoever is under that name. So whoever is in the, whoever role is on the first box here, employer, you're going to, you're going to get a list, sorry, employee, that was employee. You're going to get a list of employees. So all the names will be employees. If we switch this, um, where their role is employer, you're going to list, you're going to get a list of employers. So at the basic level, it takes a look at, um, it gives you a list of employees and we added a column for their employers. How can you build on this list? First, um, let's take a look at employers have a matching gift program, but the individuals haven't given. Okay, so we go here, we still have employer employee um, let's take this out for now. And the way I added that is um, if there are top level filters up here, right? So this one says has no transactions. Um, this applies to whoever is named. So if we go up here, the top level filters over here applies to the employee. If I go here and click matches, that's gonna bring up a whole set of um, constituent filters. These filters apply to this role, to the employer. So top level filters over here apply to this group. These filters apply to this group. 
So in this case, we are looking for employers where um, the organization we know has a matching gift program. So we're looking for a list of employees whose employer has a matching gift program. And then we add a filter up here for has no transactions and this top level filter applies to the employees. So I'm gonna open that up again. So now we are looking for a list of employees that haven't given, because we have that filter outside there, where their employer has a matching gift program. So we can see here that we have a list of employees and true enough, their lifetime giving is zero because we're, we're looking for employees who haven't given, but their employer has a matching gift program. So maybe we can approach these um, constituents, um, these potential donors, and you know maybe if we can tell them how much their impact could potentially be doubled, tripled, or however much the match is, they might be encouraged to start giving to your organization because again, they can um, increase their impact to your organization. So that's a simple report that you can add. Um, I've taken out the contact information columns just so it's a little bit easier to see. But again, these are the this is a list of employees um, who haven't given, but their employers have a matching gift program. So maybe we can approach them that way. And then we'll go ahead and save that. On another side, on the flip side, maybe you have individuals who have given in the past, um, but there haven't been any giving or there hasn't been any matches that have come in from their organization. Maybe when they gave in the past, we weren't yet aware that their employers had a matching gift program, but now we are. Um, we can encourage those um, individuals to get their gifts matched if, it's, if it still falls within that time period where they're matching or for their future gifts to get, their, to get those gifts matched. So if you look here, we're still looking at employees and this time on the top level filters, instead of has no transactions, we're looking for the employees have given. And then on the employer side, let's change this back to yes, the employer does have a matching gift program, however, they have no gifts where the appeal is matching gifts. So maybe the employer has given before um, for, for different reasons, but um, not through a match. So they haven't matched any of the gifts that have come in. So this shows me that I have 33 constituents where the employee themselves has given, but no match has come in. Um, so if you're looking at that here, that's over $90,000 um, in my pretend organization that could have potentially been matched either in full or in part by their employer. And all of those add up, especially like I have 11 employees from Dunder Mifflin. Um, if they all could have had their gifts matched, we could have multiplied the impact that their gift has made to my organization. So those are two simple ways where you can use the employer employee report template and find those matches, uh, find those potential matches, find those potential opportunities. But again, this assumes that you track that information in your database. So it's important to set up your database so you track this information so that you can report on it and take advantage of those opportunities that might just be um, hiding from you. Um, and again, like increase the impact that those gifts have had. Do we have any questions so far, Di? Lots of questions coming in. Um, I think we can keep going. Um, some of these I am happy to answer live at the end and we'll kind of go from there. Okay, cool. I think um, the report that we're looking at yet next is the end of year matching gifts follow up. 
All right. So that is me. Um, and so, uh, Diana, uh, if you'll click over to that report, I'll talk about it. Uh, and then if you want to take a look at um, some of the questions that are coming in through chat um, and take over there, we can switch roles. Um, okay. So this report is something that I think every organization uh, should be doing. Uh, it is a Something, you know, we'll we'll talk about the report in a second, but what it's looking at is something that one of the nonprofits that I donate to does for me every year, um, which is why I think it's so important. Uh, so this is taking a look at the um, uh, employer relationship, um, but also potentially um, just the employer field on the constituent record. Uh, so what you do with this report is uh, we build it out so that there's an employer-employee relationship and the you know the uh, the constituent has given a donation this year, so not fiscal year, just calendar year, um, or they have an uh, uh, employer listed on their profile tab, uh, and they have given a gift this year. Uh, so what you should do with this report is uh, run it kind of at the end of the year, I would say um, October, November, uh, and you are going to reach out to all of these donors that have this information listed. Um, so what you're going to tell them is their cumulative giving for the year so far, your EIN number, and then say, you know, something along the lines of um, if your employer has a matching gift program, please, uh, you know, consider asking for the match for our organization. Uh, the organization that does this with me provides all of that information in an email to me. I've opened my email and I remember right away to go in and do my match. And they are the only organization that does that. I don't have to dig through 50 receipts for the year for my recurring giving. I don't have to check for one-off gifts. I don't miss anything. I'm not looking for, uh, you know, paper acknowledgement letters that I received that probably my daughter's colored all over and it's hanging on her wall. Um, I just have the information, the EIN number. Um, one of the reasons for doing this um, is because providing that information makes it so much easier for your donor. Um, most, uh, companies want the EIN number to make sure that it's a real nonprofit. Uh, and it's much easier to get your EIN number from you than trying to look it up in, say, GuideStar. Uh, so it really kind of makes it super simple. Uh, and I'm sure there's going to be a, at least one question that says, well, can't we just do a blast to everyone in the database? Um, you can. That's absolutely one strategy. Um, but again, it kind of goes back to balancing the impact versus seeing your donors as just a dollar sign. Uh, if you have an employer listed or if you have that employee-employer relationship, at some point in some way, they have communicated to you that the, they have an employer. Um, and while we can easily say, yeah, but most people giving have to have that money coming in from somewhere, so they have an employer, you're not wrong. Um, but they've already communicated this to you. So they've said, yes, this is who my employer is. I've given you that name. Um, they have potentially said yes or no. So some additional filters you can run in this is, um, you know, you can exclude anybody who does not have a matching gift program. So if they've specifically told you no, exclude them from this list. Um, but if it's I don't know or if it's yes, obviously you want them to pull in. Um, you know, if they didn't give online, you may not have that information if they haven't had that question answered. Um, you know, if they came to an event and wrote you a check on the spot, um, it's still worth reaching out to them. Uh, they're either going to submit it for the match or they're not going to submit it for the match, either way. Um, but this is that low, um, not low. This is that um, natural way to communicate with them and say, hey, I know you have an employer. Hey, you've talked to me about them in the past. If they have a matching gift, please submit it for the program. Um, so non-invasive way, I guess. Um, again, you absolutely can just do a, an annual blast. Um, but, you know, your response rate to that, especially if it's in paper, might, might be pretty low depending on 
you know, your, your demographic, your constituency. Um, so this is just a really nice way um, to do some donor cultivation. You're not asking them directly for that gift. You know, it's telling them that you have that information, you remember the conversation, and here's all of the information you need. Um, so I really, really recommend doing this. Um, it's a great way to get some last minute gifts in before the end of your calendar year um, and a, a really great way for your uh, donors. Sometimes they'll look at it and say, oh, that's all I've given. I thought I gave more. And then they'll give again so that their employer will do the full match uh, if they have a, a limit on it or, you know, they remember to make their end of year gift with their end of year appeal that's going to be hitting their inboxes. Um, and again, it's just talking about that impact. Um, so you can make impact statements in there if you would like to, you know, really talk about, you know, how much further that gift will stretch if the employer matches, um, how much more you can do, what that means to your organization for the end of the year. Um, if you communicate your goals, you can even communicate your goals that way. And you can say, you know, hey, you know, we, we are $50,000 away from meeting our annual goals. You know, can you please pass this on to your employer? Those matching gifts really help. Every dollar counts here. Um, so there's a lot of different ways to communicate this to your donors. Um, but again, it's a, a pretty low to non-invasive way to ask for those gifts from uh, constituents where you already know about that relationship. Awesome. Thanks, Di. Um, so I went ahead and made those changes that we talked about um, in that report. And before we jumped into questions, I wanted to show real quickly, Di mentioned some great points about um, what to include in that letter. There's lots of great templates out there. Um, we'll send you links to those resources and you can definitely um, add those into Bloomerang. Um, for example, I have one ready here that's, that's um, taking a look at um, what merge fields you can put in, dear formal name, dear informal name, thank you for your generous donation of amount. We have some sample, ver sample verbiage here of if your employer does have a match, um, maybe this is how you can go about finding out if there's a match. Include your EIN in the information. If you have a link to a matching form, include that information there as well. Um, include merge fields for your um, cumulative giving for the year. Um, so yes, you use those merge fields that we talked about um, to personalize that letter. Um, and since we already have that report, you can reference that report in this email so you don't have to build those reports again. So I just wanted to show that real quick. You can click on add filter, um, search for report. If I can remember what that report is called. Um, that's not the name of the report that we're looking for, but um, this is how you would reference that report. So click on that report. And what this, what this is telling the system is send this email to everyone who is in that report. So you don't have to build those uh, filters from scratch. And then from here, you would just click OK and then click Send. So you can build all those communications in Bloomerang, make use of those merge fields to personalize the letters, and reference those reports so you don't have to build those filters from scratch. Awesome. Thank you so much, everyone. Um, I think we have a couple of questions here. Di, I think you flagged some that you wanted to answer live. I did. Um, so I had a question come in that said, what's a good CRM software to use for this? I thought Bloomerang handled this function. Um, so I know this uh, sort of answered your question. Yes, Bloomerang does. Um, but I, I wanted to answer this one live because I think it's important to note as well. Um, Bloomerang Academy classes are not only open to Bloomerang customers. Um, so if you have friends in the industry um, using other softwares who are really struggling, you can always send them the Academy link and they can link up and take our live classes as well. 
Um, so, you know, I always do a call out for people who aren't using Bloomerang and are using other systems. Um, it is trackable in other systems in other ways as well. Um, so I wanted to answer that live just so that everyone was aware of that. Um, especially if you have uh, friends or coworkers, uh, you know, other colleagues in the industry that are going for CFRE credit, um, we have classes that will give them one credit towards their CFRE. Um, so it's just important to, to know. Uh, another question that we uh, we received is um, about uh, uh, privately funded matching gift programs. So, you know, not employer level, um, but someone has come in and said, hey, we're going to do a match of $10,000 for gifts that meet this criteria. How do you set that up? Um, so what you would use for that is transaction custom field. Uh, so you would set one up um, for the name of whatever that program is. If they do it annually, you can say the annual, you know, like 2021, whatever individual or organization it is matching a challenge or whatever you want to call that. Um, if it's an individual that's going to be matching it, you can also set up a custom field specific to the individual. Um, their name, I would probably also include their uh, Bloomerang account number in there. So you can say Mike Smith-7253. Uh, the reason for that is if you have more than one individual or organization that will match gifts, it's helpful to know which matching gift program is matching up. Um, so uh, that wasn't something that we had originally planned to talk about, um, but uh, it should be pretty simple for you to do. So, you know, that that challenge grant, whatever you're calling it, some people challenge gift, challenge grant, um, you know, matching gift, whatever you want to call it, uh, field, and then, you know, a drop down for which one it's falling under, and then a potentially a second drop down for who's funding this one. All right. Um, uh, Laura has a question, Diana. Um, where is the employee-employer relationship tracked? What is the best practice to track that information? Do you want to pop into the database and show her that? And Diana, you are on mute, just to let you know. Great question, Laura. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Di. So that's a great question. So where is the employer-employee relationship um, tracked? So if we go into a constituents account here, on their profile, there is a tab for relationships. So you would go to relationships, and these are all the different relationships that the constituent has. Pardon my database, I do a lot of testing, so there's a lot of duplicates in there. But the important thing here first is you have to have the individual as a constituent account in the database and you have to have their employer as an individual account or as an organization account in the database as well. So once that's already in there, um, if you don't have the relationship yet, you would click new relationship. You would find the constituent. In this case, let's say I was also employed by Blossoms Orangutan Rescue. Select them and select the relationship. Um, so Blossoms Orangutan Rescue is the employer, Diana is the employee, and then you would just click save. And when you do that, I don't have to then go into Blossoms Orangutan Rescue and really um, repeat the same process. It will automatically be tracked there as well. Thank you for that question. All right, sorry, I'm going through this. A lot of questions have come through. So give me just a second. Any questions that we don't answer live will get answered, by the way. So uh, let's see what else we have. Uh, um, Diana, do you want to talk about how to receive the CFRE credit uh, for yes. attending? Yes, thank you for that question. So after this class, you'll receive an email with the link to the recording and any notes that we have for you. Um, that email will also include confirmation of how many points you earn from attending the class. Um, so all that information will be in that email. Um, in the future, if you also would like a summary of all the classes you attended prior that had CFRE credit, you can just send us an email at academy at bloomerang.co and we'll send over that summary to you. 
Uh, there is a question that says if you add employee prospects to your database, that counts towards your constituent limit, doesn't it? The answer is yes. So any constituents that you add to the database uh, will count towards your license count. Um, so if you are concerned about your license count, if you're trying to really stay under it, um, something that you can do is uh, add the employer to the employer uh, field in the profile tab until that gift comes in. As soon as their match comes in, you will need to enter it on the organization record. So you'll have to create it at that point. Um, so if you don't want to just kind of fill up the database with employers that match, um, that's a strategy that you can employ to make sure that you're staying within your license count. Uh, another question, Diana, what if you have a donor already giving but not accessing their employer's matching gift program? Any ideas on how to approach that? So employer employees who have or who are already giving but haven't been taking advantage of the match. Um, that's a great use for the reports that we showed earlier. Um, Um, so we have a report that we showed you earlier. Um, individuals have given the, in the past, but no matching gift yet. So part of part of what you'll get as part of the resources is um, how to build out this report. So once you have how you once you have identified um, who these constituents are, you can run this report to to find that, and you can send communications, an email or a letter to these specific um, individuals. And as Di mentioned, make it easier for them to get the match. Right? Provide your EIN, provide a link to your donation, find out um, how they can get that matched. But Absolutely, this is a report that you can run so you can communicate with those donors. Uh, is there an article, blog, or past Academy class on challenge gifts and how to use Bloomerang to track those? Is that something we have a class on, Diana, or? We don't yet, not for challenge gifts, no, but that's a great suggestion. Thank you. All right. Um, so Leslie had asked that question. Um, Leslie, I will send you an email on that uh, separately after the class is done um, with some instructions on that to help. Uh, if anybody else would like that, um, it'll be available as well. We'll any of the kind of the questions that will be super helpful, we'll make sure to send to everybody. All right, if we receive the match from the foundation arm of the business, does the relationship for the constituent need to link to the employer or to the foundation arm of the employer? Um, so you can link to both. So you can have a relationship with both. Um, you also don't necessarily have to link them uh, through a relationship to that foundation arm. Uh, the gift would just go on that foundation record and then soft credit to the employer. All right. Uh, I am sure I missed questions. I'm very sorry for that. Again, there, there are a ton of amazing questions coming in. Um, so we will uh, make sure that we get everything else answered and I will go into some detail on um, those challenge grants. Uh, there are a lot or challenge gifts. There are a lot of questions coming in about those. Yes. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us today. And thank you for all of your questions. I think what we'll do is uh, we'll draft up documentation in our help articles for the challenge gifts so we can send it to everybody um, who's interested. It looks like there's quite a few of you who are interested in that. So we'll get that over to you. Thank you again so much um, for joining us today. I, I hope this has given you um, some things to think about, some ideas on how you can get started. Um, Again, multiplying the impact of gifts through a matching gifts program. Um, and let us know how we can help. We love hearing from you. We love hearing your questions and suggestions. Uh, we're here for you. So uh, please don't hesitate to reach out. Thanks so much, Di, for spending part of your time with me. Um, and we hope we see you all again in another Academy class soon. Have a great rest of your day. Bye. Bye.